Well, Rich, it's time for another Best of the Worst. What do you think we should watch this week? Well, previously we had a lot of fun watching Skull Forest. Well, Swamp, Swamp Zombies, this first one, it's like an origin tale of bad. <laughs> Swamp Zombies starts off semi-competent. And, and it falls apart as the movie goes along. Suddenly, by the end of the movie, it turns into a Len Kabazinski movie. <laughs> so today, I think we should watch another Len Kabazinski movie, Curse of the Wolf. What is Curse of the Wolf about? Well, I don't know. Let's read the back of the box and find out more about this turd. Mm. When the moon is full, Dakota has finally found a way to control her lycanthropic metamorphosis and desires to live a normal life. She attempts to flee the city and hide away from the pack. But the pack doesn't want her to leave, and they aggressively seek out Dakota. Enlisting the aid of a shady nightclub owner... Uh, Rich? Not now, Jay. I'm trying to read the back of the box. Dakota must combat her past in a... What's up? I'm Len Kabasinski. Oh my god! Ow, oh, my face! Oh, oh, oh. My face! That hurts so much! Basically, it works as. Yeah. Can you even watch anything you like? Oh. Jack? Jess? Hi, hey. Len. Hi, Len. How are you doing? Mike, fine. How are you? I am great today, and you know why? Why is that? Because today we're watching ninja movies. But the problem is we have nine of them. Mike, we should watch all nine. I love ninja movies. <laughs> I'd love to watch all nine, but I'm afraid we don't have time for that. However, we do have a brand new gimmick to pick just three. Tell me more, Mike. Now, since we've thrown the wheel of the worst in the dumpster, we've created a new torture device to help select three films at random. It's called the Choose and Lose. All you do is select which face you want to punch through to reveal what tape is behind it. Now, since we have nine films and only five of us, we've covered the remaining four holes with some of history's greatest monsters. Now, Len, which face do you want to punch the most? We have Ninja 3, the domination. The domination of what? Aerobic instructor Christy Ryder becomes possessed by the spirit of an evil ninja when she comes to his aid as he, after he is gunned down. Dominated by the killer's vicious and relentless rage, she sets out to brutally attack his enemies. Her boyfriend, confused by Christy's changing personality and afraid that he may be her next vis victim, enlist the aid of Yamada, the quintessential martial arts hero. In a life-threatening exorcism and ultimate fight to the death, Yamada proves that he is Christie's only chance for survival. Only a ninja can kill another ninja. In Ninja 3, the domination. Did it say something about a demonic possession? And an aerobics instructor? Yes, it does. All in the same film? Indeed. What else? I didn't understand a single thing on the back of that box. Well, I didn't either, but it is directed by Sam Furstenberg, who directed many ninja movies throughout the 80s. Is that a joke, or do you really know that? I really know that. I wouldn't trust anyone named Furstenberg to direct a ninja movie. Well, if you're not first, you're last. Oh, snap! <laughs> <laughs> Ninja. Why would you run away? <laughs> the golf course was like, oh, oh, yeah. like, oh wow. The eye awesome. Oh my god, it's her. We all knew that. <laughs> 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 this, that looks so stupid. Oh, I can see the string! Yeah. It's so Thanks, Blu-ray! Right, it's so... <laughs> <laughs> yes! <laughs> um, so it's time to pick another movie. Why don't you punch someone else in the face? I'm gonna do just that. It's just... 
Other than my son being born, getting married, the first punch, that was one of the most rewarding experiences in my life, I will say that much. So I need to punch another one, huh? This is a tough decision. Uh, yeah, you know, there's so many faces ripe for the punching. There's I think so I know. There's so many really good yeah. people to punch. I think I know. We have got Ninja Warriors. Why don't you tell us more about it, Jack? I would love to. Nice. This is an amazing box art. Look at this. Just classic cartoon ninjas like Shinobi over here. Ninja Warriors, one man faces an army of death. Cloaked in the darkness of the night, seven deadly ninja warriors penetrate the Federal Reserve Center and steal a top secret document that holds the key to turning men into drooling zombies. So not only is it a ninja movie, it's a ninja zombie movie. Everybody wins. Yes. Sadistic, power-hungry master ninja Kurodo is behind sinister project Orion. The only way for the government agents to stop him is to call in the big gun. Steve, this hard-muscled bull of a man is a master ninja too. He's the government's only hope to save the world. But is there enough time left? Ninja Warriors. We will find out in Ninja Warriors. What? What? Oh. White on white. <laughs> Oh, what? this is a wonderful credit card. What? <laughs> Ninja Wah. Ninja Wah. Ninja Wah. Can we just know that they drove there? That was the best comment ever. Jesse says, can't we just know that they drove there? <laughs> Every scene, it's a car pulling yeah. up. Yeah, there's lots of that. Like, yeah. we can assume that they got there you, somehow. You could have started at that shot. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh, oh. No. And the dragon that I oh, no. oh, that's, that's awesome. yellow. <laughs> oh! <laughs> <laughs> is, Yay! A plus right that's there. Amazing. <laughs> well, there's still uh, plenty of faces to be punched on the choose and lose. Uh, so why don't you go ahead and, and choose another face to punch, Lynn? Okay. Last one, right? This is, this this is, is the, the last I, I one, so to we gotta one, go out huh? with a bang here. I understand. Choose wisely. I gotcha. I think um, I know it. Tic-tac-toe. We have Lethal Ninja. An army of one. With a mullet? With a rebellious police chief that has no intention of going into Chinatown, the gangs there are running wild. When the mayor receives a mysterious card which only says, for hire. With a phone number, he feels he has no other option. As a result, he ends up hiring J.D. McCade to clear out the gangs. The job leads McCade to childhood friend Sonny, who is working for kingpin Carmen Del Vecchio. Loyalties are tested as the twists spiral to one showdown. So the cops don't want to go into this area and they just hire one guy to do it? It appears that way. Well, that's a very concise description. Why don't we go watch Lethal Ninja? Hey. Are you coming? Hey, what's he doing to stand So, so then he's just gonna fuck with them. <laughs> he's gonna steal their keys. Uh, he's gonna annoy them until they move. What's <laughs> up, <laughs> oh, We're in a movie. <laughs> we stole my fruits. <laughs> oh, no. Wow. Boner, dude. Wow. 
Uh, uh, so Len, uh, this was your first best of the worst experience. We were just locked in a room for uh, 27 hours watching ninja movies. Uh, uh, what are your thoughts on watching ninja movies one after the other? Um, to, to be honest, I've had a lot of experience at watching ninja movies throughout my lifetime. So okay. there, there, there have been many a nights where me or my brother have stayed up till wee hours in the morning just watching action films and ninja films and, and, and more martial art and action films over and over again. So, and, and a lot of them too is I love the B-movie genre. I mean that, that I like. Yeah. As painful as it can be at times, um, that's, that's the stuff I like. But you, what you're saying is you're used to being in a, a, a very small room watching bad movies uh, uh, when the room smells like farts and beer. I expected it to smell really bad. Okay. Not a single person farted. Nobody out. farted tonight, and I appreciate that. No, from I all think of that you. stuff's funny. To me, that's funny. <laughs> we were all funny Getting the hit in the groin in yeah. movies and TV and stuff, it's always funny. You're always going to laugh. Hit in the groin. Shootos to the chest or where neck or where <laughs> karate chops are funny oh, okay. in movies, I think. And, and yeah, farting is, it's, it's just funny. It'll always be funny. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, well, speaking of farts, the first movie we watched tonight was... <laughs> <laughs> was Ninja 3. Ninja 3. The Domination. The Domination. Uh, uh, Mike, why don't you explain Ninja 3, The Domination? I think Ninja 3, The Domination should explain itself. Okay. <laughs> So this is terrible, needless to say. You are crazy. That was great. That was the least terrible thing we watched. It's open to debate, but let me quickly recap it here. Um, she plays an aerobic instructor who teaches one class, but is also a telephone line repairman. That's her full-time job. Who gets possessed by the spirit of a demon. Who got ninja. shot 35,000 times. <laughs> a ninja who has a grudge against golf courses. Uh, <laughs> Golf course patrons um, uh, and, uh, gets killed and then gives her her sword, which comes out of her closet on a string. <laughs> and then she wants to get revenge on the cops who are just doing their job. Yes, yes. And then another ninja shows up, a real life ninja. Shokusaki. Yes. Uh, who has an eye patch because uh, someone threw a ninja star in his eye. Mm -hmm. He shows up hunting down the, the ninja. Did you say hunting down? I may have. You, you did, you did uh, say cunting down, um, yes. The Freudian slip, perhaps, I don't know. Um, but he, he, come, he comes into the country to, to hunt down uh, the, the, the ninja, who is now in the body of the lady. And then uh, some things happen, and then the movie ends. <laughs> you, you glossed over everything. You missed over everything that makes everything this movie great. Important. Okay, what, are, what is the most important thing? Let's the be, let's the begin. possession. Okay, the movie, the movie starts off, and there's a golf course and there's a ninja on the golf course, and he kills a guy. We never find out why he kills this guy. They say he's a scientist, but it's never brought up again. The aerobics instructor, she gets uh, attacked by this ninja and then possessed by this ninja, but the possession comes and goes. Like she blacks out, and that's when she turns into the ninja. But she goes to the police station to say, hey, I was attacked by a ninja, which I think we've all been there. And, and this guy comes up and he leans on the desk and he just like stares and smiles and it's like the creepiest thing. Yeah. That guy is creepy. <laughs> He's just staring. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Uh. And then it turns out that he's the romantic lead of the movie. I'll help you, sweetheart. Oh no! Oh, oh, no. Oh. She pulls her face away, all this hairs on her face. <laughs> Who thought it was good though? Somebody somewhere in the producing or writing or directing said, this lead, he's got charisma. He has he got that like it factor. Rapist. He's degenerate, he, he's inconsiderate. Yep. And, and he, he doesn't do his job. And, just... and he sucks at being a cop. Yeah, and there's a, uh, uh, after one day of aerobics, uh, oh, okay. She goes out back at the back alley of the, the gym, and there's a woman being accosted by some thugs. Mm -hmm. So she goes up to him and says, hey, stop attacking that lady. Mm -hmm. So then they attack her, mm -hmm. and then a crowd forms and just watches this attempted rape happen. With the cop in the crowd. And the cop is in the crowd. Because he just... he's been stalking her. <laughs> he showed up to the aerobics class, and in a wacky scene, yeah. he was pretending to do aerobics with he all the He pretended ladies. that his cardio was poor, and he yeah. passed yeah. out. And was... Which I think was supposed to be you know, oh. cute and funny, like charming, like he tried to join the aerobics <laughs> class to get to know her more, yeah. um, and it just didn't translate w so at all. Harsh. And that's the theme amongst all these movies, is just, it didn't translate into anything. <laughs> Someone's bad idea turned into a worse idea. <laughs> well, oh, okay, and then she goes back to her apartment, 
which looks like no apartment ever. It's it's joyfully wacky. <laughs> it's a quirky apartment. Oh, there's a locker in there, two lockers. Mm -hmm. The bed is made out of like weightlifting equipment. Mm -hmm. um, the the refrigerator has a little exhaust yeah, spinny vents. Putting this to Blu-ray, this is a Blu-ray win. Oh, this yeah. film looked great mm -hmm. on Blu-ray. I will say, uh, this, when Shokusaki, the real-life ninja, is on camera doing his thing, that the movie wins whenever he's on camera. The fight scenes are well done. Yeah. He also choreographed the fight scenes in the movie. They're well shot. Well, it was weird to me that at the ending of the movie, the ghost just goes out of the girl and back into the original dead body, and then he's just alive again. And then the aerobics instructor and her shitty boyfriend have nothing to do for the rest of the movie. Yeah, they're not going to do anything. They're not going to do nothing. Well, they're going to watch. Uh, unless she has, like, residual ninja in her. Nope, uh, they're just no, literally just, just watching. Watch. <laughs> <laughs> they just kind of watch. They kind of just look up like, they're looking at Mount Rushmore. Yeah, what, yeah. <laughs> what, what was the point, then, of the initial possession? That's the thing. There isn't one. Yeah. Like, the movie could have been about... Yeah, the, the movie could have been about... Uh, uh, what's his name? The uh, eye patch? Uh, show. Shokusaki. Yeah, it could have been about him chasing the southern ninja, mm -hmm. and that would have been fine. And then this, like, this possession just gets in the middle of the movie, and it's really weird. You know what the moral of the story is? White people ruin everything. Yeah. Mm, yeah. White people ruin no. karate movies. Oh. Oh, no. Is she going to no. kill him in that? Yeah. be like, oh, she's a ninja sword. now? That's it. I think, no. son of a bitch. God damn uh, it. Yeah. yeah. That sucks. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, just, that just sucks. White people. <laughs> See how easy it was? <laughs> You know where the real talent of the movie is? Whoever made that spinning dummy. Oh, Billy, help me. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? That's like a dummy. That was an obvious was dummy. There's, there's a lot to talk about in Ninja Why 3. Why isn't it called Ninja 3 The Possession? That would have made more sense. Why is it? Well, let me ask, uh, Len, you would probably know, because it's called Ninja 3, but there is no movie called Ninja or Ninja 2. I there are other Ninja movies, right? The, the canon acumen, though, I'm pretty sure there's other, there's ninja movies that this was to follow though. And I'm not sure if like Inner the Ninja was the first one, but it was something like that where other ninjas were the, the precursors to this movie. Right. It wasn't Ninja 1, Ninja 2, Ninja 3 per se, but it was like Inner the Ninja, Revenge of the Ninja, and then all of a sudden Ninja 3 pops up and they call it 3 when but really you'll never know what 1 and 2 really that's, are. Yeah, that seems like but there was confusing. meant to be a 1 and 2. They were just called other films. But there's no like intertwining characters. Like no, use... no, no, no. So then why? why... No. Because ninja. Yeah. Because ninja. ninja. Right. Oh, oh, that's something. Is is one time when she's starting to feel the demon coming on. And she tries to beat it away with aerobics. She tries to beat it away with aerobics. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna dance all my troubles away. Dance away. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. This is so awesome. <laughs> yes. 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 <laughs> Would you say she tried to exercise her demon? No, she tried to aerobicize the demon. Well, after the, the, the cop tries to rape her in the police station, <laughs> then doesn't help her when she's almost raped in an alley. By like 12 dudes. Yeah. Suddenly he's her boyfriend. Mm -hmm. And then she says, come on over to my apartment, which is a cinder block building with bizarre lockers. furniture and lockers. Arcades. And then she lets him in and uh, she says, I'm gonna take a shower now. Or no, she comes out of the shower. Yes. And then he's like, what's going on? And we thought, like, this doesn't make any sense. We right. thought either 25 minutes of the film was missing or she was setting him up to attack him. Or like punch him and say, get out of here. At yeah. that point too, her exorcism has not like, or her possession hasn't really escalated to the point where she's really getting crazy yet. Yeah. We didn't really even yeah. see her get aggressive with people, I don't think, at that point yeah. in the movie. So she comes out of the shower, and again, this is a translation thing where you go, who, who made this? Is this supposed to be funny? She comes out of the shower and she's just, uh, like seducing him, and she opens a can of V8 and dumps it on... Well, he had the V8, and I think she took oh, it from him. Oh, he had the V8, like... and she pours the V8 on her body, and then he starts licking it off, like whipped cream or something yeah. along that line. And uh, what? Oh, no! What? No! <laughs> There's nothing more rock than V8. V8? <laughs> right, V8. So it's on best of the worst, but I think we should do real quickly, at least everybody should name their, their one positive thing from the movie. Rich, go. I would be happy, the, 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 
the golf course fight. I would have been happy if the movie were a two hour long fight scene on that golf course. That was Mike, some great stuff. Your turn, go. Opening sequence, hands down. Uh, if, uh, if you want to get specific, when he shoots a blow dart into a, the barrel of a gun. <laughs> uh, also the fight scene in the uh, dilapidated house. The, yeah. that, that, was, that was a good fight scene. That, that was my favorite moment. Sorry, when, I didn't mean to steal that. No, that, that was great. <laughs> that, that was my favorite moment is when he, the specific moment in the fight scene in the dilapidated house, he jumps from the first floor to the second floor through the floor. And he's like, ha ha, that was awesome. Uh, well, everyone said the golf course scene and that is great. But I would also say any of the, the possession scenes. I like the look of it. I like the lighting. I like the smoke. I liked the, the exercise, jazzercise music. Um, oh, uh, no. All the music in the movie, I like the score a lot. What was really awesome during the p possession scene was the, the little like laser lines on her face coming from the video game machine. Oh, yeah. I thought that looked super the, neat. The ghost comes out of her arcade game. Yeah. I thought that was great. That was super neat. Uh, I would say my favorite aspect of it again, I, again I'm with you on the opening, I think the opening was awesome. But as, as the, the film as a whole, I would say, any, anytime Shoku Saki is on camera, his fight choreography is very well done. All the fight scenes, I think, are the photography and fight choreography in general is really a, a saving grace for the movie. So I would uh, say fight choreography is, is my favorite part of the film. You, you can't buy the relationship, which is a big part of the movie. The, the ninja needs a mission, but you, you do know what's going on and generally why it's going on. It's just unfortunate that when the ninja uh, possesses the aerobics instructor, all he wants to do is kill the cops that murdered him. Right, you would think there's something more important the ninja yeah, would yeah. probably want to be doing. I think, I, think, I think the hallmark of truly bad movies is you're constantly asking yourself what's going on and why is it going on? I, I was not doing that with this movie. I understood what was going on and I understood why things were happening. Yeah. That's how you break a headstone. <laughs>
Uh, Ron Marchini is is training at his house, and the ninjas attack his house like immediately, right? Well, someone th shoots a giant spear or Somehow something into his, his front door. Yeah. And who does that? The ninjas, the seven ninjas. Well, I don't think, I think they did. I think no. the door spears were training spears. Yeah, I think they were training spears okay. as well. That seems like you're doing a lot of damage to your house just to train. Yeah. <laughs> and he was also climbing along the same rope. Uh, that the other ninjas had purchased at Ninja R Us. At the, at the boat supply store. So Willem Dafoe shows up to hire Paul Simon to fight ninjas. And and before Bolt Simon up... Simon had eight Garfunkel. That's, that's how... <laughs> right, right, Simon, right, right. Simon, Simon eight Garfunkel. Whoa! Oh. Whoa! Oh. What the hell? Like, this is his house, right? Yeah. <laughs> what the hell's going on here? Wait up! So they're psychic ninjas. They had they had gone through the trouble of setting up traps in his forest, <laughs> right? Uh, Pre-hiring, which did not take them ten seconds. They would no. have had to plan. Yeah, they were that elaborate traps. Right. Yeah. So continue, Reg. I, I, I guess it. <laughs> <laughs> so this one, the police hire him to clean up the ninjas that are. They're doing something. <laughs> I hope you had a pleasant trip, Nancy. They really want to let you know where people are going at every time. There's just constant shots of cars driving up to the location, and they really hold on them, too. I, I, I guess we'll be first this time into the positives of Ninja Warriors, because oh I do have a positive here. Oh. And, and again, it is not the level of Ninja 3, the domination, the, the athleticism, all that kind of stuff. Uh, the Ninja seemed a little more hardcore in this movie than in Ninja 3, the domination, but uh, Ninja Warriors had fight talent in it. It was just not really competently shot, in my opinion. The fight scenes were not well, every, well lensed. Every single shot, every single fight scene was yeah. wide. And One no long cuts. take. Yeah. That is incredibly difficult <laughs> for stunt performers and even trained fighters to do. That is not easy stuff. Also incredibly so, boring to watch. It is boring to watch. <laughs> Any positives about Ninja Warriors? I, I think it's cute when the seven ninjas are constantly shown one after the other doing their thing in the beginning. Yeah. Can I pass? <laughs> the police chief getting stabbed Sword through, through his the head. Yeah. Sword through the back of his head. The greatest that, edit ever. The greatest edit. And, and him driving around with his, his little friend in a tiny car. <laughs> Stopping for a ninja on the side of the road. That was a cute little scene. And uh, why were they driving in the desert together in a tiny little car? I don't know. But he got a sword through his face. <laughs> Other than that, the entire movie is a big pile of crap. <laughs> <laughs> is this the big showdown? No. Maybe. No, there's another half an hour or so. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> My positive. The whole opening sequence with the seven ninjas. You stole mine, bro. Rich Evans already said that, I, that was my that was my positive. The opening? The opening with the seven ninjas. I was gonna elaborate on that. Okay. The they have this break-in sequence in which they're they're stealing the secret document, and that entire break-in sequence was very ninja. Mm -hmm. They were very stealthy, yeah, were. they moved really neat, and there was these little like I almost want to call them visual gags, where it's like they were hiding and moving, and like it was all very real ninja. If you're gonna steal mine, then I'm gonna change mine to Paul Simon spitting darts into somebody's face. That is face. awesome. Yeah. So yeah, that's an awesome bit there. Do we want to talk about the Ronald Reagan cameo? Oh. <laughs> uh, it was duct Cameos? Up yeah. On the ceiling. Anytime they're in an official building, there's a Ronald Reagan picture. Even if they couldn't find a place to put it, it's just awkwardly taped <laughs> out of the chalkboard. Which is quite amazing because this has the look of a movie that was shot, I think you guys would agree, in like 77. It looks like a late 60s, yeah, early 70s like movie. It sucked, it belongs on this panel, but. I wish Sybil Danning had been in it. To say that, yeah, I wish Sybil Danning was in it. 
Um, they provide no stills of the film. No just simple Danny with a sword. Hey. Yeah. Ah, oh, really? Yeah. That's it? So Lethal Ninja, who is neither lethal nor a ninja, nope. but he is an army of one, according to the, the packaging here. Rich, give us a plot synopsis of Lethal Ninja. Okay. Lethal Ninja is about a crime-ridden city, and the judge, who is trying to clean the city up, takes a handwritten business card that says, hire me, calls a guy with a perm, and the guy with the perm is going to clean up crime in the city by mildly annoying the city's criminals. He's going to run past them in a, in a comical wide shot and steal their car keys and run away. And he's going to sneak up behind them and blow away their cocaine. The kid did that. And then he's going to kill a guy with his butt by stabbing yeah. him in the butt. The little kid did that. Maybe, maybe kill the guy by stabbing him in the butt. We're not sure. And, and then he's going to fight his childhood friend who he played basketball with. <laughs> and then the friend's dad is going to kill one of the judge's 20 adopted children. <laughs> After slapping her during sex while thinking about his son. That's weird. And then he's going to die at the end by falling three feet. Three under seconds. a ceramic horse. <laughs> <laughs> now wait, that is really good. That's good. That's great. That was, that was what happened. Very good job. Good job. God bless you right yeah. there. The man with the cane was a was the mayor. The man with all the adopted kids was a judge. Okay. <laughs> judge is a good guy. Mayor's a sleazy See, bad for, guy. For half of the movie, I thought the guy with the cane was a crime lord. He is. <laughs> well, yeah, he was. He was. He's also the mayor. Yes. yes. Okay. He's a corrupt man. He's a corrupt. Wait, let, let, let's get back to sort of a weird start to this movie, though. I keep a rider with a charm that's reminding of me. The ex old B. Wait, what is what? Is a scene happening? Yeah. They went up and punched somebody. What? The dance club was in a some kind of loft area that was reused six times throughout the film. And, and there are locations. ten people, so it must have been like you know like a Monday afternoon yeah. at the dance club. Yeah. And and the the stage of the dance club <laughs> is is the corner of the room. There's these three guys there singing rap. And they're, and they're looking to... directly into the camera. <laughs> Perm guy, our lead hero, mm, he keeps him. handing out cards to people that say for hire? Is that what it was? Mm, Which is the number. alternate title for the movie. The card doesn't specify what his service is yeah. for hire. It just says for hire. Right. Well, that's why nobody called the number. <laughs> Ever. Right. The judge did eventually. For all they knew, it was an advertisement for phone sex. <laughs> Well, finally, though, the judge called the for hire uh, number. And it was really disappointed because it wasn't phone sex. Because it wasn't phone sex. Oh. But then, but then uh, uh, our mullet guy, perm mullet guy, shows up to discuss the fact that, uh, discuss how he's going to clean up the city and murder all these people with all of his, the guy's adopted children just standing around. Who the hell are you? What are you doing here? J.D. McKay, Your Honor. I'm for hire. <laughs> Uh, I knew it was coming. Fuck. The judge doesn't say, okay, kids, go inside the house. You know, yeah. daddy has to talk business. Go play in the pool while we go over here with this yeah. incredibly creepy man with a permanent. <laughs> that long party scene at the beginning, that, that was it for me. It, it's over. We have no ninjas. We have a plot. Like you said, you're, you're, he was dead on with his assessment and his, you know, your opening. But the thing is, though, that could have been done in like eight minutes. Yeah. Yeah. That's right, they would, it, we would be in the party, we would then show the judge in a car going to a different location, and then it would cut back to, to the party. party. Yeah. I thought the movie was edited out of order yeah. at first. I was like, what is happening? Was the mayor the guy on the beanbag chair in the car? No, that's- That wasn't- That's, that's <laughs> Grandpa! That well, that's, that's, that's Grandpa ninja from Ninja Warrior. Warrior. Listen, that's the guy that needed the nursing home. That is Ninja <laughs> I think we're not. I think we're not accurately describing just how incomprehensible <laughs> Okay, we need to clarify some things. Lethal Ninja, the man with the perm and the mullet, shows up at the party in the beginning at the judge's house wearing a, a waiter's costume. He's serving food, but he's also a secret lethal ninja. The mayor's adopted son is also at the party, but he's wearing like a, like a bellhop costume or, or, or like an admiral's uniform or something. <laughs> Doesn't make any sense. In the middle of the party, it cuts to them in front of like fake brick wall 
where Lethal Ninja is now wearing a hamburger costume. <laughs> <laughs> He's training the kid in martial arts. Then it cuts back to them at the party. <laughs> and um, Lethal, I you were kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Lethal Ninja is, is back in his uh, maitre d' costume. Yeah. And the kid is back Again. in the, the little child's admiral uniform. <laughs> and, um, uh, that, and, then, then it cuts back later to them uh, training, and, and the kid, st he starts slapping the kid in the face. <laughs> he slaps him too hard, and the kid starts crying, and, and they hug. Um, the kid was crying for a different reason. I don't know. He slaps him so hard that the kid hugs him. Me meaning, I mean, the question is, is Lethal Ninja in disguise undercover as a maitre d' or waiter at the party, or is that his day job? No. I think he's on, oh, in that's disguise. that's definitely his day job. Like, no, no, no. He's in disguise so he can slip the for hire note I mean. again. Yeah, okay. The burial of the one adopted daughter, <laughs> where there is no, the funeral, There, it's the burial scene. There's no grave. She's no. just in her casket on a lawn. It's, it's just a casket just sitting, sitting in a park. <laughs> right, it's just a casket in a park. <laughs> there, so. Oh, yeah. wait, 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 okay, there's a chain of, there's a chain of events that, that leads into chaos. Yeah. First, it starts with Millie, Millie Vanilli's dad, yeah. who's, who's having sex with the judge's daughter, and that's like a big reveal. Son, is... Well, while, while he's having sex with the daughter, he's crossing his eyes yeah. in bed, while thinking about his son, Millie Vanilli, and he keeps saying, Obey me! Obey me. Obey me! And that's, that's a scene in the movie that happened. But it's, it's, it's Ringo Starr and uh, Gene Simmons' love child who right. decides to put on work safety goggles, yes. who shoots the Chinese adopted daughter of the judge. The piano player gets shot in the head. He has to yes. save the singer yes. at the yeah. Sweet 16 the birthday Indian party. Adopted. The Indian yeah. adopted, yeah. Indian adopted yeah. daughter. Yeah. But they all go to the funeral of the Chinese girl who gets shot in the head by Gene the love child of Gene Simmons and, and Ringo Starr, right. who decides to wear work safety goggles. And oh, Dave Coulier shows up in drag to yes. commit some kind of murder. I don't know who. Yeah, who's he trying to kill in that Millie scene? Vanilli. Because he runs up to Millie Vanilli. Millie Vanilli was kind of hiding, though, yeah. in that scene, though. He Millie shoots Vanilli. at yeah. Millie Vanilli. Right. Millie Vanilli tries to make amends That's the first with, person he shoots with at, yeah. Perm Ninja. But he gets shot in the side by Dave Coulier in drag. <laughs> He's not fooling anyone. He's not fooling no. anyone. It's the worst disguise in the world. Yeah. It's, it's... And then somebody in a wheelchair rolls up and attacks Dave Coulier in drag. That was St. Elmo. 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 St. Elmo was shot. It, let's backtrack and then we'll, it's not getting Save, off track. St. Elmo got stabbed in the buttocks with Sia blades. <laughs> no, 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 no. At the pool, he was shot. Yeah. And the kid revived him by rubbing his groin, oh, and he was no. okay. <laughs> and the paramedics, with the cooler, a beer cooler, <laughs> as the kid's rubbing his groin. It's also right around this time that Millie Vanilli, after being shot in the stomach, he just gets up. He's got an exit wound and everything, but he's just, he's oh, just no, running around. No, he goes up to his dad, and his dad just sort of smacks him around a bit, because he's disappointed in him, while he's, like, dying from a gunshot wound. Yeah. You idiot, you got shot. Uh, this is all within a 10 minute span. We're making this movie sound so much more exciting than I know. it is. And, and then you get to the last scene, which takes place in the dance club, but now the dance club is an auction hall. All of the valuable auction items, which came from like a dollar store and they're made out of plaster, are sitting on a folding table that's covered with a dirty tablecloth. Oh, what's, yeah. what's a table? <laughs> table? Table. Folding table. Okay. <laughs> the evil mayor and, and Gene Simmons wanted that piece of art because... <laughs> <'cause, laughs> evil mayor and Gene Simmons wanted that piece of art because it had all the drugs in it. Was oh, that it? Really? I, what? I, how the fuck did you get this? Yeah. No! It's in the movie, Pitch. What? After he fell on the thing, there's little bags of drugs all over the Oh, yeah, oh, that's, that's why he was bidding on it? That, yeah. okay. So that's why they're bidding on it. And then Evil Mayor, that's why Evil Mayor hit Gene Simmons with his cane, because Gene Simmons outbid him for it, even though it was Evil But Mayor. as he jumped to his death and committed suicide, that makes the Lethal Ninja eat where even more non-lethal, yeah. because we don't even get the payoff is, is, you know, even if we liked the hero, which I don't think any of us do, but if we did, you want that payoff of him winning at the end or doing something. Was good. he even there? 
<laughs> they had this awkward fight scene where they go up the steps. They, they go up the steps and they make their way down the walkway and then they make their way back down the walkway the other way. And then for no reason whatsoever, Gene Simmons jumps off a three foot drop lands in a ceramic horse and dies. <laughs> yeah. And that's the end and, of the And that's the end. His son comes up, I guess. It... <laughs> and then, but then out of nowhere, all of, all of the adopted kids come into the <laughs> Look at the dead body. Look at the drugs. And it's the drug dealer, Gene Simmons guy, who the kids have no relation no. to, but yet they're there. For some oh, reason, yeah. the kids are there. Yeah. These are the worst fucking parents ever. <laughs> ever. Look at this, he's, he's, he's dropping five uh, feet. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. What? Come on. <laughs> uh, well, I, this was a, probably the worst thing I've ever seen. Um, <laughs> How many weeks in a row now? Listen, though, you though say this that, has been a bad stretch for you. On, on. You say that every I want to say, though, it has the funniest segment. If, if, we're, if we're talking good, bad, yeah. um, and, and we're looking at this like a, like a graph of some kind, right? And you have movies like The Room or Troll 2 where they, they maintain a consistent level of bad funny. Yeah. This one is like... Spike and then down, and that spike is worth it for me. Um, it's it, it achieves the level of, of great bad movies for a brief moment. The rest of it though is incomprehensible, terrible, just awful in almost every way. And, and, and I'll agree with what you're saying, but but for me the the peak is so short <laughs> con compared to the body of the film. Yeah. It's just way yeah. too short. But let me let me ask you this though. Um, if the entire movie had been consistently sort of amusingly bad, would that 10 minute chunk be as amazing? That's Was that question. the result yeah, of yeah, boredom, 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 holy shit? No, no, no. <laughs> no, I think, I think that, that sequence is so bizarre, so ill-conceived, so terrible, that it, it is funny in its own right. It's a funny bad movie rides the line between incomprehensible and funny bad, yeah. and and this most of it fell under incomprehensible. Hero sucks. You, you have to understand what's happening enough to see how they're failing at making it to make it funny. Yeah. And then I, the the funeral scene, I understood what was going on, and I understood what <laughs> they're trying to do. By and the that's way, when it achieved brilliance. That's part of the magic. The entire first half hour of the movie was a beautiful disaster. We were so confused, Jack. It's more than half an hour. J positive on Lethal Ninja? If I'm going with a genuine positive, and yeah. not, I mean, obviously we all love the ending. Um, the fact that the boom mic showed up a few times means that they thought to use a boom mic. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is, that's a positive. That's a positive. That's good. Yeah, that's a positive. Oh! Well, now's the time of the night when we choose the film, which we think is the best of the worst. Clearly, all three of these films are the worst, mm -hmm. the worstest ever. No, um, slightly maybe not the worstest there. ever. I don't, no, I'm not they sure are about that. terrible and they are bad, but there is a good one out of the three. There is a best of the worst. We'll start with Rich. Rich, which one of the three films is the best of the worst? Okay, my, my pick is going to be slightly, slightly unusual. Slightly unusual. Uh, if I had picked, you know, not the best of the worst, but the best of the best, it would have been Ninja 3. It's, it, there's some really entertaining moments in there, some neat fight stuff, but the show is best of the worst. And the most entertainment value I had out of a movie was Lethal Ninja. That, that, that 15, 20 minute spike is so high. So high, it blew everything out of the water. No, so I'm picking um, Lethal Ninja as the best of the worst. But because that first hour and 10 minutes is so bad, I'm also picking it as the movie we destroy. <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! What love. just happened? <laughs> is this real life? <laughs> Wow. Where do we go from here? 
You blew my mind, Rich. You've blown the format. It's great. It's great. Well, it, it does bring up a unique problem, which is the best of the worst is neither the best nor the worst. It, it is sometimes both. And I have to say, I agree completely with Rich. Wow. And my pick for best of the worst is Lethal Ninja. Here's where I will get passionate for a minute in my, my, my picks, I suppose. Um, I love martial arts. I've been in it my whole life. Um, I mean, here's where we go. If I pick the best of the three, just overall, of course, it's Ninja 3. It had the best production values. I hate to, it, obviously, budget helped that movie where it failed other ones. But there was some talent there. With Ninja Warriors, why I'm not saying it's the worst is because there was martial art talent in the film. It was not properly captured, but the talent was there. The ability to do good fight scenes was there in that movie. There's some long, we talked about, one take fight scenes that are incredibly difficult to do. So I can't say that Ninja Warriors is the worst. Well, what is your pick for the best? The best of the worst, I will go with Lethal Ninja. Whoa! Oh I will go with Lethal Ninja. Can you Ninja. explain? I will explain. I will go with it is this. The spike in comedy, <laughs> though short, was better comedy than any of the two other films. Wow. And that's why I will pick it. All three are so bad. But that comedy <laughs> spike for that brief five minutes, maybe? It's but like a minute and a half. I, I say, okay, I say from, and the, and half. from the, the spike sex scene is so on. high. Okay. From the sex scene on. I didn't, nah, see, that's not me. There was just, just the funeral sequence. I'm gonna agree with Mike there, I think. And the funeral sequence, I get it. It was so incompetently done. And I'm pretty sure they were being serious about it as filmmakers. Yeah. And that's, that's fucking pathetic, dude. <laughs> it's, 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 that, that was very pathetic. Lethal Ninja is my choice of best of the worst. I thought I was going into this as the underdog. <laughs> <laughs> voting for Lethal Ninja. <laughs> like, I, 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 like I said before, even before we get to the insanity that is the dress and drag funeral sequence, the fact that it, like they had flashbacks with no discernible flashing back and side flashes and leaving locations and editing done by a schizophrenic. <laughs> I, I was so invested in this movie uh, because of how terrible it was. So, and I really thought that, that I was gonna be alone on this. <laughs> I did notice everybody consistently throughout the running time of the film was trying to figure out what we was going on. We all wanted to understand we it. We wanted to know what was going on. We, we were just trying. Couldn't. Right. Le Lethal Ninja was the, the saucy lady that holds a little back, makes you work for it. <laughs> She ain't, she ain't no dime store hoe. She's going to make you buy the nice steak dinner and treat her right. Jay, your pick for best of the worst. Uh, well, you thought you were the underdog. Now apparently I am the underdog and that I'm going with Ninja 3. Uh, as far as the uh, most entertaining chunk of the night, the most entertaining like 10 minutes or so, mm -hmm. Definitely Lethal Ninja. And that's the rest what, of the movie, the rest of the movie, I, I was not entertained by in a, like a bad movie sense. Like I, I was just frustrated and irritated. Ninja Three, uh, higher production value, but still not a good movie, really. But I was entertained the whole way through. I liked the music. I liked the uh, aerobics. I liked the exorcism stuff. The cardboard sword. I liked the cardboard sword on a string. I liked the lighting. Uh, I, I genuinely enjoyed Ninja Three. It's a toss-up between a comedy spike or a com maintaining comedy or, or, level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maintaining a much lower comedy level than other standards of bad, good bad movies. Yeah. Uh, so I can understand that. There, there, it's a toss-up, but four to one completely blows your vote out of the water. <laughs> I don't give a shit. I'm gonna take this home. Okay, fine. You take that home. None of us want it. Now, I, I think, think I liked series. Ninja Warriors better than any any of you yeah. guys did, just I, because I, of the the martial arts yeah. aspects of it. But sure. it's a shitty movie. There's yeah. no doubt about it. But um, <laughs> but uh, a shitty movie, but not worthy of destruction. No, no, no. I would say Probably no. Not. Yeah, I would Probably say no not. movies tonight are worthy of destruction. That's that's. I can go. I go that. Go see Lethal Ninja at your local movie theater. You, right. There there is a lot of, uh, if I could just say briefly. We're, we're, it's not a complete flatline throughout the whole thing until the comedy spike. There's a lot of funny moments. Let's not forget the, the, the piano part when she's singing at, <laughs> yeah. and, and yeah. him yelling at the other guy at the party. There's the Belle de Devoe dance the duo Belle video. Devoe, there's a lot of, it's more of a what? 
like what the hell are they doing rather than laugh out loud moments, but it is a pretty darn good, good bad movie. Lethal Ninja. Lethal Ninja. The best of the worst. Nice. Yeah! Oh, karate chop! <laughs> 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 Thank you.